Hello and welcome to this special edition of Credit Matters TV. My name is Ali Limtiako, Associate Director in the Housing Enterprises and Structured Securities Group. We're here today at the Affordable Multifamily Housing Hot Topics event in San Francisco, where our panelists spoke about innovations in affordable multifamily housing. First up, we have Dan O'Connell, Director of Acquisitions, Finance, and Underwriting for the Wisconsin Housing Preservation Corp. Dan, thanks for joining us. Well, you're very welcome. Dan, um, WHPC recently received an issuer credit rating from Standard & Poor's. How has this affected your organization and how has it you know, benefited you, if, if anything? Well, first of all, it was very exciting to get the rating. The, uh, it was uh, something we wanted to explore to see if it was uh, worthwhile doing. And once we got it, um, uh, we were very interested in it. Our board of directors, however, are a lot of financial folks with uh, organizations that are rated entities. And uh, with, uh, with being a rated entity comes other responsibilities. So we're, we're taking uh, much more attention uh, to our balance sheet and how we manage our balance sheet, uh, how we strategically place our debt, what we do with our investments, and whether something is going to be classified long-term versus short-term and how that's all going to affect how we move forward in our, in our operation. So it, it, uh, it makes you pay more attention to what you're doing as an entity. But on the plus side of that is uh, we have everybody paying a lot more attention to us. Uh, and I mean everybody, that's uh, financial uh, groups, invest, equity investors, as well as lenders from across the country want to do more business with us. And conventional lenders uh, are so CRA motivated to work with somebody. They would just as soon work with somebody who has a deep balance sheet and an uh, S&P rating than someone who does not. And so we're able to uh, oftentimes, I hate to say this, but dictate terms of conventional lenders to get what we want uh, more recently, particularly in the last year, uh, because of how we've been able to structure our balance sheet and now we're an A-rated entity. That's great. And it's certainly interesting for us since you were the first housing entity in the U.S. that was not a public housing authority, um, you know, that was rated under our new uh, public and social housing provider criteria. Um, so why did you take that step? And uh, do you have any thoughts for uh, other organizations such as uh, WHPC? Sure. Um, well, the reason we took the step is to create a, a more options for ourselves and to create more of a, a more visual presence to people who we th would like to attract to partner up with, uh, both from a lender and equity provider. We would like to bring more equity into the corporation uh, so we can expand what we're doing already. Uh, we've got over 7,000 units and we service over 11,000 residents, between 11 and 12,000 residents, but our need really is for the whole state. And uh, on the other hand, uh, as I mentioned earlier to some other folks, there is no mission without profit. And so we have to maintain a strong financial organization to expand to where we need to get to to service the needs of the state. So we felt that this was um, a vehicle that we could utilize to get there. Um, I think it is. Uh, I think it will prove in the long run to create a lot better uh, financing tools uh, for us. Uh, we've seen that already in the last year, and uh, and we'll, as long as we maintain that, and of course, once you achieve something, you have to maintain it or even expand on it. And uh, I would say that anybody that would want to do this, it's not a difficult process to get through, uh, and it doesn't have to be too time consuming. It took us six months, but we took our time. Uh, I do think it's very rewarding, uh, but you have to raise your whole level of operations uh, your attention to detail, your attention to your balance sheet, and how you really operate your company. And it needs to be focused on the long run, as well as making short-term goals. So uh, it makes you a better organization, but it will, require, it will require more time and more effort on your part to get there. So. Okay, understood. Right. And uh, well, thank you for sharing your thoughts on the, uh, on the rating and the rating process. Certainly. Thank you for Anytime. being here today. All right, you're welcome. And now we're here with Rich Froelich, Chief Operating Officer and General Counsel for the New York City Housing Development Corporation. Rich, thanks for joining us. Sure thing, Ollie. 
Rich, how would you describe the current state of affordable housing uh, in New York City? Well, it, it's an exciting time and it's a challenging time. We both have the good news and the bad news. Uh, the good news is, is that we're making a lot of progress. We're doing a lot of work, a lot of um, new projects, both new construction and preservation of affordable housing. The problem is, is that the, we have such enormous demand in New York. Um, the affordability issues are, are really very large. Um, we have a real challenge with the income disparity. People have a hard time finding affordable housing, and there's a real challenge as far as how much you know they can pay in rent and the like. So the good news is we have lots of programs. Uh, the mayor, Mayor de Blasio, has announced uh, his Housing New York program, which will be uh, our approach to create 200,000 and create and preserve 200,000 units over the next 10 years. It's really exciting, and we're going to be coming up with some new programs as a part of that, but also continuing the success that we've had over the last 12 years. Great. Well, um, you know, what is HDC doing uh, in terms of, you know, innovative strategies to try and help mm. that address the, the needs that sure. you have? Well, obviously, um, we're the biggest multifamily housing insurer in the country. Mm -hmm. So private activity bonds are, are definitely part of, of everything that we do, uh, and really been we've been very active in issuing, uh, and we've worked a lot with the state to make sure that we get a proper allocation of private activity bonds. With that, we've also been able to use a lot of LIHTC, the Low Income Housing Tax Credit. Uh, last year, over $400 million in equity was poured into our deals from LIHTC. Um, also, uh, HTC puts a lot of its own subsidy in there. We have been highly profitable, really successful, uh, and we put that money back into housing by making 1% subsidy loans for projects. So that also allows us to do uh, a more um, and we'll continue to be involved in other exciting projects. We work hand in hand with the city. The city is using an enormous amount of capital. Over the housing plan, it's projected that there will be about $6.5 billion over the next 10 years from the city, over a billion dollars from HDC, and trying to leverage other resources so that it's a $40 billion plan. So it's exciting. Yeah, it sounds like it, and it's certainly a big challenge, you know, developing affordable housing in New York City. but. Um, we'll do our best. Yep. Great. Great. Thank you so much, thank Rich. You. It was good to see you. Next, we're here with Reverend Richard Hamlet, President and CEO of the Global Ministries Fellowship. Reverend, welcome. Good to be here. Uh, Reverend Hamlet, you've been successful in developing 57 multifamily properties, approximately 10,000 units throughout eight states. What do you think makes the properties that GMF owns um, succeed in relatively affordable markets where other rental properties may potentially struggle? Well, I think it starts with an overall plan that we have for each asset. And that plan involves a very specific uh, management plan for the operations, a detailed social services program that we uh, execute on site, uh, helping our residents and with uh, services that meet their needs and, and uh, in different t parts, of their, um, parts of their life. And I think just the, uh, the, the oversight of our whole program, uh, and the larger we grow, uh, the more resources that we're able to generate with performing assets, which is really economies of scale, which allows us to invest more back into our communities with uh, the upkeep of the capital asset as well as the expanded social service programs for the residents. Great, thanks. Um, what's your strategy in terms of acquiring, maintaining, and operating properties, you know, over the wide geographic base that you, you have? Well, I'm a big believer in diversification, and uh, the 57 properties we have now are in eight states, and 20% of our units are elderly or disabled residents, and 80% are family. So we have diversification within our resident profiles within the pool of properties we own as well as diversification uh, by, uh, by location and the layer of subsidy, subsidies that are within our affordable housing structure. So, uh, so really the strategy is uh, to grow with performing assets and we've been blessed at this point, our debt service coverage ratio on all of our units is around 1.36 which is a very strong uh, cash flow coverage rating. Um, and we have properties that are being maintained and quite frankly, the resident profiles are being upgraded and improved and they're becoming more communities than projects. And so we're thankful for that. Well, congratulations on your success and thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much.
Now we have with us Margaret Danuser, Director of Finance for the Colorado Housing and Finance Authority. Margaret, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Sure. Um, what steps has Colorado Housing taken to in recent years to improve uh, financial stability of your large multifamily uh, portfolio? Uh, we've concentrated on two things, basically. Uh, one, just the expenses within the indenture, so on the variable rate debt, trying to reduce the costs of any liquidity that's uh, supporting those bonds, as well as uh, terminating um, higher cost swaps as they become optionally terminable. Um, on the fixed rate side, we've done some refundings also to take advantage of the new pass-through structure. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've refunded a large uh, group of risk share loans and we were able to put into this new pass-through structure that saved us about 240 basis points there. So just reducing costs and then also just making sure that the performance of the loans um, continues to uh, achieve a high level and we don't have a lot of delinquencies or defaults. And what um, factors have kept the, delin the delinquencies or defaults so low in the portfolio? We have a, a really great asset management team that works to um, service the loans all the way from inception of the loan, once it's been underwritten and closed, all the way through payoff. And so they'll do everything from monitoring the portfolios, uh, they'll do a risk score for loans, and they'll go through the entire portfolio at least once in every three years. If it's a higher risk loan, they'll do it much more frequently than that. They do um, uh, everything from market studies to needs assessments to actual contact with the management companies to make sure that uh, the portfolio is performing well. And when it does experience problems, then they'll, um, we have a, a crack workout team that uh, really comes up with some creative solutions to keep properties in a performance mode and keep the properties, uh, preserve them as affordable if they do go into a, an REO type of situation. Great, well it sounds like overall the authority is you know, very proactive and um, innovative and you know, managing its multifamily portfolio, so congratulations. Um, thank you so much for being here today um, and thank you for watching this edition of Credit Matters TV.